now that we have all of the Dubin's path geometries in hand, uh, we're going to, in this lecture, we're going to go through and calculate the path lengths for each one of our uh, Dubin's paths. So we'll go ahead and get started. Just to, as a reminder, we're using, we're looking at four cases of the Dubin's path. We're missing two of the cases because we're assuming that the waypoints are s sufficiently spaced. So we'll go through and calculate, uh, show the uh, distance along each path for each, each one of these four cases. Okay, so let's start off with our right straight right. What you'll notice here is we're going we're gonna to travel a distance along our right circle and to calculate the arc length, we're going to be calculating, um, we're going to use our clockwise rotation because it's a, it's a right circle. So it's a clock, clockwise rotation. So our clock, clockwise rotation, we define as between a var theta 2 minus our var theta 1. And then we're multiplying. So this is the arc length. So arc length will just be equal to our radius times the, oops, times the, the arc, the length of the arc that we're traveling. Or the, the arc angle that we're going to be traveling along. Okay, so this is, again, this is just our radius. Excellent. So let's look at v these formulations to make sure we understand where the var theta 1 and var theta 2 come into play. So if we look here, our starting uh, angle is, uh, say our vehicle's right here, our starting orientation, this is going to be uh, chi sub s. Okay, now chi sub s is pointing up, but we want to know, given the circle, what is the angle to the vector going from CRS to PS? So what is the angle of this vector? And that is going to be our var theta 1. Right, so this is var theta 1. And if we just look at our, our starting orientation of that vector, well, it's going to be either pi hat plus or minus pi halves uh, because we know that the vector pointing along uh, chi sub s has a 90 degree angle. So there's a 90 degree angle right here. There's a lot of blue in there. There's going to be a 90 degree angle, and this is potentially not drawn super well, right? But we have, oh, I was going to the wrong line. Okay, so we have a 90 degree angle there. And so to get this straight, the angle of that straight line, what we're going to do is take chi sub s and we're going to subtract, we're going to subtract because it's a negative rotation uh, along the, the z-axis. So we have chi sub s minus pi halves. Okay, so that was our var theta 1. Our var theta 2, then if we, if you recall, we, t we define var, var theta as the angle of the line C S to C E, right? So we'll do that angle. And we noticed that, that in a previous lecture that since RSR, we have that parallel angle. This guy right here. Now let me draw this. The, the one that I'm highlighting right here, that angle is just going to be um, our var theta subtract pi halves, right, to get it to go from along that line to go up. So again, we're, we're subtracting pi halves off that. So this is our var theta 1. Okay. So that's where we get this arc length. Now if we look at the distance traveled along our second arc. Uh, so in this case, we're going to hit, hit our line and we're going to travel. What is the distance along that? Well, again, we still have a radius r. So that's where the radius r comes out. And we're going to, again, it's clockwise. So this is going to be our var theta uh, 2. Gosh, I did not write that very well at all. And this is going to be our var theta 1. So 
we take a look at this, recall from a previous lecture that the orientation of where we start off this, this line and this line are actually parallel, even if maybe they're not drawn super parallel in this figure. So that's why our var theta one is gonna be uh, the same as our var theta two from the, from the previous arc length. So these are equivalent. Okay, and then we have, again, we have our ending rotation, our ending orientation, right? We're gonna have a right angle between here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take that and we're gonna subtract off pi half. So that's var theta two. So we have, in this case, this is var theta one. Okay, so we have our clockwise rotation. Right here is how we can define what var theta is. And again, remember that var theta is that angle from the north axis down to uh, the points along the line between our two center points. So var theta is the angle of the line. We have C, R, S, and C, R, N. Okay. And to know what these subscripts are, this guy would be the center corresponding to the right east end. Oh. Right uh, end east. And let's see. This would be center at the right start north. So you get idea of what those subscripts are. So we can just calculate our angle of our theta. Uh, we did that in a previous lecture. And then we can write up our total path length. So this is the length of the line. This is the length of the path of the arc, our first arc. And this is the length of the second arc. Okay, so we can, we've now defined all of those variables. We can quickly calculate what the, the total path length is. Okay, and one note, again, this bracket, we said this is a modulus operator. It's gonna be mod two pi. And we need to make sure, so, let me write this in red. Ensure that all of your var theta one and var theta two are between, are in zero to two pi. Okay, so if we do that, then, then this modulus by two pi will, will help us. Okay, so now let's go into our right straight left. So we, we also went over all of the geometries in this. Make sure that I didn't miss anything. Okay, um, we're gonna be going along the right circle. So since it's right, this is uh, corresponds to a clockwise rotation. Then we're gonna travel along the line, right? So if we traced our path, we're gonna travel along the right circle. We're gonna then travel along the straight line, and then we're gonna travel along the left circle. So we have left corresponds to counterclockwise. So we have our var theta two minus our var theta one. And we have, in this case, now that we're going counterclockwise, we'll call this our var theta, theta one, subtract our var theta two right, because we're doing counterclockwise. We discussed that in our, when we, we talked about calculating the arc length, arc angles. Okay, so var theta two, again, is this angle. We went through all of the geometries for, for how to calculate that, right? And we realized that it's gonna be var theta, where this is var theta, again, is the angle between, now we have our, CR uh, angle of the line, not between, of the line 
uh, CRS to CLE, uh, right? So we have var theta. We can define, calculate that fairly quickly. Then we have minus pi halves plus sine, the inverse sine of uh, 2R over L. So we went through all the geometries of, of where that came from, but just note that, that, that again, this is our var theta 2. Right, and our var theta one, when we start off, it's just the same as we had before, right? Where we start off here on the starting circle, this corresponds to our, what we called var theta one. Okay, where we have our starting orientation and it's gonna be uh, a difference of pi halves between them. We're gonna subtract off pi halves to get the, the angle of the vector that's pointing out, that guy. Okay. So then on our second circle, we have our var theta one, whoops, our var theta one, where we start, where we hit the line, right? This is what we would call, just in our arc lengths, we'd call that var theta one. That's where we hit the line. It's just gonna be our var theta two plus pi. So that's where we get our, our var theta one for the for the next arc length. So v our var theta two plus pi. And then we have the chi sub e, right, plus our pi halves. So in this case, we have chi sub e, right, which is actually if we look at it, we have chi sub e. And then to get from this this vector, uh to, um, oh, we, we need to know what this, the angle now, might, maybe I should draw it in red so we can see it easier. We need to know what the, the angle is along that circle. So in that case, we would take our chi sub e and we're gonna subtract off, or we're gonna add our pi halves, right? Because we have chi sub e and then we're gonna add pi halves to get it to go straight up. So that's where that guy comes from. Okay, and then our total path length. This is the length of, of the straight line. And we calculated that also in a previous lecture where we just looked straight at what is, what is the distance um, traveled along this straight line segment, right? And then we can say this is our arc one, and this guy is our arc two. Okay, so we have we have the ability to now calculate the the path length for um, traveling along the right straight left path. Now we'll take the left straight right, and we'll. Note that this is left, so it's counterclockwise. So we would be taking basically our var theta one minus our var theta two when we're do, talking about counterclockwise motions. Um, so in this case, since we're going to the left, our var theta one is gonna, we're gonna add pi halves instead of subtracting it off. Uh, like we did when we were going to the right. So this is this is uh, var, th var theta one for the first circle. And then var theta two, right, is, is defined as this angle. Right, so that's our, that's our var theta two is that angle. And we'll see that it's, it's gonna be var theta plus this little small portion right here, where you can go through the geometry, and that's a, a great homework problem to figure out why this, this small angle right there is the inverse cosine of 2r over l. Okay, now we'll take on our end circle, right, since it's uh, left straight right, Right is clockwise, so then we'll get, when we find our arc angles is var theta two and var theta one. Right, so again, we end at the, uh, at chi sub e, 
and we're taking off pi halves, right, so that we can point out. So this is, we're going to take pi halves off of that and point out. So that gives us our, our ending angle. And our starting angle is just defined as our, we're going to subtract off the pi. So we had, we could add or subtract pi. Um, but we just know that these two lines, again, are, are parallel, even though they're not drawn super parallel. Um, so we can just say that we're going to take off pi to get to our second ink, to get to where we start the second circle. Okay, so again, I didn't go into those in great detail in the previous lecture, but you have all the tools that you need. It's going to follow a very similar process uh, to get those, those values out as we, as we did for the uh, right, straight, left. Okay, so now we still have the same, the, the length of our straight line. We have our arc 1 and our arc 2. Okay, so we have all of these, uh, all of the variables now defined for calculating what the length along the third, the third case was, or is. And now we have our fourth case of left, straight, left. Again, we're doing counterclockwise and counterclockwise for, or not clockwise, counterclockwise for both of our circles. Uh, and so because we have counterclockwise, now this is going to be var theta 1 minus our var theta 2, where that, again, those are the starting and ending orientations along the circle. And this is going to be the same, var theta 1, var theta 2, where I do apologize, I'm abusing notation where we have uh, var thetas are, are defined slightly differently. Yeah, anyway, so we have our, our uh, starting orientation. It's going to be um, the chi sub s plus pi halves. So again, because we're going left, we take chi sub s, right? And we're going to, to get this line out there, we're just going to rotate it up by pi halves. Um, and then the final point we have our we have var theta var theta defined and then we're going to just rotate that by uh, a, a positive pi halves to get to this angle okay and we follow a similar process um, as we have before to go to the end point right so the end since we're ending on a left uh, we're going to do our g sub e we're going to move it out 90 degrees so we're pointing along that direction and then our var theta plus by halves because they're these are going to be the same since our lines are parallel so again very brief overview of that left straight left case uh, but we have similar length for our straight line and then we have our starting arc oops and our ending arc arc one and arc two so we have, we have now all of the components we need to calculate all four uh, path lengths. So we can come in there, given our starting and ending positions and orientations, we can now come through and figure out exactly which one has the shortest length. So we calculate L1, L2, L3, and L4, and choose the one that has the smallest length and, and have that one be the one we execute.